Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing ISS Vanguard, published by Awaken Realms and designed by Christoph Piskorski, Pawel Samborski, and Andrzej Betkiewicz. This is a fully sleeved, all-in copy of the game with no lid lift that's stored across three different boxes. The core box, the close encounter box, as well as the sleeves box. The game is fully sleeved and organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, as well as facilitate things throughout the game. If you have any questions about anything you see here in this video, please let me know down in the comments below. And for links to anything that I talk about in the video, please take a look in the description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. And for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the continuous support. Let's get started organizing ISS Vanguard. Before we begin, I do want to talk about two things that come in the all-in version that we do not include in our storage system. First off, we do not include the posters in our storage as these are just art prints and you can hang them on your wall, but they have no gameplay purposes or anything like that. So we've gone ahead and left them out of this video. The next item we've excluded is the dice tray. I personally like rolling my dice with my hands, so I tend to not use dice trays. In addition, for storage purposes, it has these large jagged sides here, which make it for a very challenging item to actually store and fit everything else in. It didn't really work with our organization solution, but I was not that sad to see it not be included. If you'd like to include this, I'm sure that you can find a way, maybe if you remove the mystery envelope, or you can always just put it on top of your box like so, and then pull it out when you're using it. Heck, you may even use this for other games if you do like the dice tower here. The next thing I want to talk about are items that we've completely replaced in the box, and starting off with the trays from the core game. There are several of these black and white trays from the core game that have been replaced completely by trays in the sleeves box that actually do fit sleeved cards and are a lot bigger. So we've completely replaced them and we do not use these trays anymore. So go ahead and remove those from your core box, you will not be needing them. Much like the trays, the miniatures expansion has replaced a lot of the standees and tokens with the corresponding miniatures. And the Sundrop edition of the game has colored all of the different sections, so you won't need any of these rings to put on the bases of any of your characters either. So go ahead and remove all of these standees. I'll go into more detail which tokens you actually do need to keep, and we'll store those in the miniatures box. So you'll not need any of these components for redundancy's sake. The last thing that we've completely replaced are all of the dice in the game. The upgraded dice in particular are going to swap out your red, yellow, and blue dice. And you'll notice that we didn't mention the green here. The blue and the green dice in their glossy forms here look super similar when you're actually using them in-game, so it's very hard to tell them apart. So we've decided to go with replacing the blue and keeping the original green in the box, and you'll see those later. But you can replace all of your red, blue, and yellow, and then put them in their appropriate spots in the organizer. So we've gone ahead and replaced those, but we've not replaced the green dice. So those are all of our replacements and omissions. Let's go ahead and start talking about what's inside of these boxes, starting off with the core game box. We'll lift off the lid here, and inside you'll see that we have our two large books here, including our rule book as well as our planet book. We'll move the rule book as well as the planet book to the side here, and underneath you'll see that we have the ship book. Now's a good time to talk about where we are currently in our ISS Vanguard journey. We're a couple of missions in, about six or seven missions currently, and so our game state is saved up to that point. Now this is important because there are going to be potential spoilers that you may see in different things, but they're going to primarily be in the shipbook as well as the awaiting envelope. So I won't actually show you any of these potential spoilers, so it should be a spoiler-free organizing video. But that being said, this should not be the first video that you watch when you're setting up your game. The first thing that you do when you do set up your game is you should be working with this introduction here in the ISS Vanguard rulebook. This will detail to you where you should be putting specific cards in specific trays, as well as how to set up the different section boxes, as well as your shipbook here with the different pages and where those belong. Please make sure that you're doing that before you start your game, play through the tutorial, and then once you finish the tutorial, then you can come back to this video and set up your game appropriately. So this is set up so that after you've played that tutorial mission, set up your initial book, then you'll be able to put everything away like so. So this should facilitate all of your future game sessions. So that's definitely something important that you need to know when watching this video. We won't go into too much detail with the ship book, but when you do open it, you'll have those hard plastic pages that also serve as dividers and sort of rules references on how the game works. And then you'll have those plastic pages that are able to slide in all of the different cards you'll be collecting along your journey. The other thing about storing the ship book is that you'll wanna make sure that the side that has the large end here is going to be at the bottom. The way that it's going to sit is so that it sits flush with this side of the box. So when you actually close the lid, it'll push up this bottom side so that it is completely flush. Because of these larger section containers from the upgraded edition, they're going to rest just like so on top. So it should fit perfectly putting your rule books on the side here. So that's something to keep in mind when you store that shipbook, put that large end on the bottom here. 
Underneath the shipbook, you'll have your ISS Vanguard secret envelope. I'm not going to open this or anything like that on camera, but there are some larger components that will shuffle to the bottom here, and that'll give you some room in this bottom section to actually place them between your miniatures container. So you'll put it like so, that way it sort of leans like that, and then your shipbook will go on top, keeping everything nice and flush. So make sure to shuffle those larger components to the bottom, and then put them in this section here. Our miniatures container here has been trimmed down from the original insert. You're going to make sure to use an X-Acto knife on the sides here to make sure nothing is sharp or hazardous, and that way everybody is able to simply lift that lid and then take the different member that they want to use for their landing crew. So you'll go ahead and grab the miniature based on the section that you're using, and there's two different models for each. I really like the detail on these, and I love when the sun drop comes in different colors, so not only is it functional, but also beautiful. You've also got your miniature of the ISS Vanguard here as well. So go ahead and put those to the side and only get them when the game tells you to. Underneath the miniatures, you'll have all of your different paper components, starting off with the different ships that you can command, and then you'll have these paper versions of the operations book, as well as a log book if you're not using the app. And then lastly, you'll have that prologue book to give you some background on the ISS Vanguard game itself and what the mission is at the start of the game, and then your personnel files here. This one is going to be used if you're using the expansion, gets more backstory and additional abilities for your different crew members. And lastly, we have the current system book. This is going to tell where the ISS Vanguard currently is, and the different planets that you're able to explore, all the different maps in the game. Next up is your awaiting envelope. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide this so you don't see any spoilers, but it's going to say awaiting on the bottom here. This is where you're going to store all of your components that you currently are not accessing. So these are going to be things like research projects or scientific discoveries, things like that, that are waiting to be sleeved into your book or maybe some tokens that you have access to. So you'll take these out when you're actually playing the game, but for storage, you can just toss them all in here. So that's what the awaiting envelope is and no spoilers at all. Underneath the awaiting envelope, you have all of your crew member boards. These are for all of the four different sections of the game. Next up, we have a Chip Theory Games dice tray to store all your remaining section dice. You can definitely just use a plastic bag or your upgraded dice bag if you'd like in order to store them instead. But the reason that we use this is it's easy to see all of the different icons that these dice provide. All the dice have these little dots in the corners that show the symbol that occurs the most frequently on them. So we definitely made it so that it's easy to see what is provided by each die. So go ahead and put those to the side for now. Next up, we have a hardware storage case that's going to store a lot of your tokens. I love the way that you just pop the lid off. You've got these nice rounded edges here, so it's easy to pick up the different components. And it's just one lid that you have to open instead of several. So I really like the way these works. And once again, I'll leave links in the description below for anything that I talk about here. Let's take a look inside of the token container. And inside, you'll see that we have your variety counters. These can be used for all sorts of things. You'll have your advancement tokens, your command tokens, your energy tokens, your time tokens, as well as a variety of tokens for playing. This is a marker for the amount of actions you have, your start player token, and then four the different crew members to show that they have their activations left. And then I'll have your four danger dice in here. I like having all four, even though we have upgraded them, because then you can give each crew member one danger die, as opposed to having to share. And then you'll have a variety of different polyhedral dice that you may need for certain circumstances. So you can leave those in there as well. We'll close that token container and put it to the side for now. Moving to the right side here, we have our ISS Vanguard leads bag. You'll put all of these small circular tokens inside of your bag here, and you'll be pulling from them randomly in order to find your discoveries on the different planets. Once you get three, then hey, you can actually discover something from the pile that you're currently searching from. As you can see, we have them in these coin capsules in order to protect them. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find coin capsules for your game and the appropriate sizes. But I do recommend that you make sure you have an X-Acto knife as well. You're gonna wanna trim down the edges here. Sometimes Sometimes there are these little plastic bumps that will show up. So definitely trim those down to make sure the sides are nice and smooth so you can get that uniformity between all of your different coin capsules to make sure you don't know exactly what you're picking each time you reach into that bag. And underneath all of our lead tokens, you'll have all of your pet miniatures. I love the sun drop version on this. They're keeping their color for their different sections. Fantastic. On the bottom section here, you'll have all of your play mats for the game. Pass these out to the correct player based on their color, and then you'll have a nice area to store all of your different components in the game. Your cards, your dice, and your crew board. Next up, we'll talk about the different section containers in the game. Generally, when you're playing, you won't actually have to pull these out from mission to mission, as you're only going to be taking the components out of them based on which sections you're using. So inside of this main area here, you're going to have all of your section cards, and these are going to be labeled section on the back with their color on the bottom. And you'll have all of those section cards available. I've separated them based on the current level that I've been using. So those are all your section cards in here. But on the back, you'll also have all of these extra sleeves for potential crew members that are going to be in this section 
action. You're your level ones, your level two, and your level three. So you'll need these only when the game requires you to take them, so you can leave them in the box for right now. The other cool things about these section compartments is the lid actually has a secondary lid, and inside you're going to store all of your dice here. I've actually kept all three of your danger dice in here as well, because each of the crew members can only have three of them at a time, and then any of these section dice that you've unlocked for that character as well. So you'll store those in the top of all of your different section containers, and then when you're done, you'll just put the lid back on like so. So you'll have these fantastic component organizers in here that are going to store the dice, the cards, and the extra sleeves for each section. You can leave them in the box or give them to the player that's playing that section. I'm not going to go into detail anymore on these different section cards in here, as they're all the same, but I will talk about all of these cards tucked away in the corner. First off, we've got an extra divider here that we're not sure what we use for yet, the planet cards divider, as well as all of these different reference cards in here that we'll be using. And these are going to show you the turn order, dice checks, how different things work in the game. You also have additional landers that you can get as you play and unlock different things, and then your reference cards for the game round, and this one's really important, the danger die reference card. You'll need this pretty much all the time to show what the different danger is going to affect you. And then you'll have all of your different threats that are going to be on the board that you can discover as you play. I won't reveal them here for potential spoiler purposes. So your large tarot sized cards and as well as this planet card is going to be stored in that right side here for now. And that's everything inside of the core box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. We'll start off by putting all of our different section trays on this top wall here, making it so that they're all in a nice line, leaving some room in that right side. In that empty space, we'll put all those large tarot sized cards as well as that planet divider. We'll then place all of our pet miniatures in this middle section, followed by our token container, all of our dice, as well as our lead bag, our crew boards, and our play mats to fill out that bottom section. You can sort of rotate them here so they're nice and tight. We'll then put our awaiting envelope on top, followed by our small booklets, as well as our paper components and ship boards. We'll then place all of the miniatures in this middle section, followed by our secret ISS Vanguard envelope with those large components on the bottom here, like so. We'll then place our shipbook in like so, making sure that large space is on the bottom side here. Followed by our Planetopedia with our spiral binding on the right side here. And lastly, our rule book. And that is everything inside of our core box for ISS Vanguard. Let's go ahead and move to the Close Encounters box now. So the Close Encounters box is definitely going to take a lot less time than that core box, but inside you'll see that we've pretty much not changed anything. We'll remove that plastic lid, and inside you'll see that we have all of our Sun Drop miniatures in here. We'll lift that bottom tray out, and you'll see that all of the original miniatures are intact in their current places. You only pull these out when the game actually requires you to, so it's good to just have them here so it's easy to identify where they belong. And there is a small compartment here, though. We do keep a silica gel packet in here for freshness, but we've also got all of our additional tokens for things that are not represented by miniatures. So I'll go ahead and detail quickly what these are. So all of these tokens here are not represented by miniatures in the game. You can go ahead and pause the video if you need to to find these tokens. And here are those last five tokens. Once again, pause the video if you need to. So that's everything in the Close Encounters box. We'll put all of those tokens back, return our silica gel packet, put in that plastic covering, and then close our lid. And lastly, we'll move on to the Cards box, which is going to be in that Awaken Guard Sleeves box. Let's get into the box here. And as I mentioned before, this is only the Wave 1 components, and they do fit all snugly here inside of the box. And that does mean that there's going to be a lot of extra sleeves that you're not going to be using currently, and you'll just leave them out of the storage solution currently. I imagine when we get wave two, that's when the rest of these sleeves will be used. As mentioned before, the trays in the original game are going to be replaced by these larger versions, but they still retain the same layout. You've got these smaller trays for your smaller cards, and these larger trays for your larger cards. And that's for not only the A tray, but also the B tray here, and they're even labeled here still on these plastic containers. I think the best way to talk about these trays is to just go from tray to tray. I'll take out the A tray first. On top here, we have the planetary scanner. You'll be using these for when you're trying to find information about your planets. I'll put that to the side for right now, and I'll tilt the trays so that you can see what we're actually storing here. So first off, we have all of our points of interest, and those are going to be all organized by number from ascending order here. And then next up, we have our missions cards, our global conditions cards, and lastly, our production products here. So these are going to be all your large cards on that side. And then going towards this back section here, we have all of your discoveries separated by their different colors. So for example, we have all our alien tech discoveries here. And then your gathered discoveries. These are discoveries that you've actually found during your adventures. Next up, we have your events that you'll be shuffling and using pretty much every mission, and then our lander mod. So during the game, you'll probably be taking out the events deck as well as these discovery decks and putting them on the board. So that's everything in your A tray.
Let's move on to our B tray here. Let's lift the plastic off here and look at the different sections. Starting off with our square cards here, you'll have your armory. These are your items that are available to you. And then your unavailable equipment. You can unlock these and you'll move them from this section to this section. Then moving on to the other standard cards, we have the resting crew here. These are gonna be all of the different crew members that you have available, just not currently. You're gonna have to wait till after your next mission. And then you'll have your recruits. These are all of the different crew members that you can potentially recruit. Uh, next up, we have all of our landing cards here. And then you'll have your recorded planets. These are going to be those little sheets of paper based on the different things that you found. Next up, you'll have your facility upgrades here. Let me go ahead and grab that divider. Facility upgrades, your possible situations, your future situations, your research projects. That's all in that section. In these smaller sections, you have your injuries, which you won't need to shuffle, but then your rank ups, which you will. These will give you your objectives for each game to actually rank up your different characters that are on the mission. And then you'll have your bridge cards, different things that you can upgrade it, separated by color in here. Once again, no spoilers here. And the last section here is your remove from game area. Anytime that you're asked to remove something from the game, put it in this section. So that's everything inside of your B tray. And that brings us to our last tray, which I'm going to go ahead and nickname Tray C. So we're going to have a pencil in here in order to mark on those planetary sheets, followed by those planetary sheets whenever you need to record a new planet that you've discovered. We'll put those to the side for right now. And on this bottom section here, you're actually going to have all of your different upgraded crew cards. So anytime you upgrade a character to level two, if you're including the expansion for the extra backstory on your characters, you'll get an additional mission for that crew to complete. And then once you've completed it, I'm going to go ahead and hide what it says on the back, you're going to get an additional upgraded version of that crew member. So they're organized here. So that way, once you do get a level two crew member, you can go ahead and find the correct crew member here to get them their additional objective. And then on this top section here, you're going to have your last tab here, your unique discoveries. You only pull out a certain number of these. They've got their backs hidden, but they're specified here. The number five, for example, if the map calls for it, and you'll put them on the board in their correct spot. And in this last section, you'll have all of your current active crew members. Based on where you save, you're going to have a lot of different different crew members that you can use. There's also some silica gel packets in here for freshness, but then you'll have all of your different crew members from their different sections. In addition, if they do have that level two or higher, they're going to have that additional mission that they're gonna be going on. Once again, if you're using that additional expansion content. So these are all of the crew that I currently have access to, and then any objectives for those level two, just paired with them like so. So anytime you do actually use them on the planet, you can put that objective to the side so that way you know if you're actually meeting or not. You're not keeping them in different places so that you have to go find them every time. So these are all of your active crew sleeved in their section sleeves. We'll go ahead and put those planet sheets as well as our active crew members in that middle section, put that pencil on that bottom side, and then close up our C container. So that's everything inside of our card box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. Let's start off with our C tray on this top side here, slid up to that upper section, followed by our B tray on the bottom like so. And lastly, our A tray right in the middle. So when you actually play the game, you're never gonna actually remove these trays from the box at all. You'll just simply remove the plastic covers and then put these in an area where everybody can reach them. So it's a great way to store your cards and also facilitate the use of them during actual gameplay. So go ahead and return those plastic lids there and then close up our Awaken Guard card protection box. And that is organizing ISS Vanguard. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. And for links to anything that I talked about here, please take a look in the description of the video. How do you organize your copy of ISS Vanguard? Do you like using the dice tower? Did you implement it into your organization solution? Do you use coin capsules or do you think they're a bit much? What do you think of the way that we organized in general? And what do you think we're gonna have to change when wave two arrives? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching, Side Game Strong. Wrong.